it's a much nicer night tonight than it was two nights ago because two nights ago I was towing the boat back to the house here because the motor wouldn't start so let's talk about the fuel system let me pop this cowling off and set it aside and I'll uh, show you what I had to do to get it fixed so when I first tried to start the motor the last couple times it uh, kind of chugged like it wasn't warmed up it's not typically a experience with a fuel injected engine that's more typical of carburation in two cycles this this motor shouldn't have that problem so I immediately suspected some sort of fuel delivery issue I inspected all of the hoses and lines back to the fuel tank. My fuel tank is uh, gravity fed to this point. And then the fuel enters in here, it comes around into this plastic filter. This is a removable plastic filter, and uh, the filter itself is only about $14. So I replaced that, tore the other one apart just to inspect to see if there was junk in there. It was clean. It was only about a year and a half old. It exits the fuel filter and goes down through this hose back to the mechanical fuel pump on the back of the motor, that component right there. That mechanical fuel pump is actuated by crankcase differential pressure. And the crankcase pressure operates diaphragms in there that can wear out and they move back and forth and they supply fuel to fill this box. This box is called a vapor separator or a gas collator. And it's the supply point on the motor to supply the high pressure fuel pump. And I suspect that was my problem. After the fuel exits the high pressure pump, it goes through this final filtration system, down this high pressure pipe, and into the fuel rail, and it stays there until it's used by the engine, or if there's too much pressure in there, the pressure regulator sends the fuel back to the vapor separator. So what was my problem exactly? Well, I'm not 100% certain, but I got it running right now and it's no longer acting cantankerously. I uh, pulled these three bolts, one, two, three, disconnected all of the fuel lines. There's about five of them, uh, two suction line and a pressure line in the back, another vent line, a return line from the fuel rail, the main line in from the low stage pump, and this whole assembly comes off of the engine. I was able to take it up to the shop put 12 volts through the pump and verified that the pump was working in both directions. So I blew all the lines out, got everything clean and clear. About the only thing that I can figure if that's not the problem, and it may still be, is that when the computer initially kicks on, when you turn the key to the accessory position, it sends a signal to this solid state relay, which closes the power leads up here to the motor to the high pressure pump motor and I've read that this solid state relay can go bad and when it does you can wrap on it a little bit maybe that will cure your problem but ultimately you'll need to replace that so in 2016 prices this is about a $50 component this filter is about a $14 or $15 component this pump it ranges anywhere from 380 to 525 dollars. I have been unable to source this metal pump. It's about a third of the size of a Coke canister. And unfortunately, nobody makes a rebuild kit for the mechanical fuel pump. And the fuel pump itself is a Honda part that's about 80 bucks. So that's what I went through to get mine running again. Hope you don't have any uh, issues with yours. If you do, try unplugging this clip, take this thing up to the workbench and put 12 volts through it and validate that the pump is working. The other thing that can cause your motor not to start, being that this is a fuel-injected motor, 
these fuel injectors are actuated by a minimum of 10.6 volts. So if your battery is strong enough to turn the motor over but not charged enough for the pressure of the voltage to open, snap these fuel injectors open, you won't be able to start the engine. Absolutely have to have more than 10.6 volts to be able to get this motor to start.